You here to join the Dawn Guard too? Skyrim mods. Dawn Guard vampires should have been this. For a lot of people, the Dawn Guard DLC was disappointing to say the least. Can't you tell just from looking at me? Vampire. They said, it's just not very fun to play as a vampire. And what's up with his little nub wings? He blew the vampire lord's wings out of this, okay? He didn't get a choice. Actually, wait, why do they have tiny little flappers? <laughs> Look, they're just like fluttering ever so slightly. Okay, Dawn Guard vampires did actually suck. But that's okay, because over 10 years later, I'm here to fix it with mods. Oh, and at any point during this video, if you get the overwhelming urge to just press that like button as hard as you can, I will not be offended. All I've ever wanted was people to be afraid of how much they love me. That's it. Simple request, really. First, we have to set the ambiance. This is Dawn Guard. This is vampires, vampires, and werewolves. We've got to get the atmosphere down pat. Literally never used that phrase in my life, but it just felt right. Supermoon, werewolves moon, vampires moon is a very long name for a mod, but it does one thing perfectly, and that is add a perpetual moon into the world of Skyrim. And this moon is massive. Now all of your knights will seem mesmerizingly dangerous. Hmm. Well, isn't that nice? Also, if you think about it, should vampires even be able to go out in the moonlight? I mean, if the moon's just a reflection of the sun, shouldn't they just, like, explode or something? I, mean, I don't know, guys. I think I'm seeing the pixels in the simulation here. Vampire beasts are commonly considered lesser vampires, but holy shit. These things are terrifying and so, so, so hard to kill. Seriously, it took all of Riften to take these guys down. <laughs> Lost a lot of good men that day. Sorry about that, Riften guards. Okay, so I did spawn these in using the console commands, but only because I was too afraid to go searching for them in the caves. Ha 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 ha. So all the beasts added with this mod are long, gnarly looking bat creatures that move very, very quickly. One of the monsters even has like these glowy blue uh, sacks on his head. <laughs> now watch out for that one. Vampire beasts add seven brand new types of enemies to Skyrim, all from various folklore throughout the world. Honestly, the scariest one is probably the Garkin. It's like super long and gangly. When I spawn it in Riften, it just followed me so close for so long. There's absolutely no escaping. I mean, good God, I should have had my mic on when recording this because I was screaming several octaves higher than I normally do. <clears throat> The other beasts include Alpha Garcane, Fledder, Proto Fledder, Catacan, Elder Catacan, and the Ikamara, which are actually pretty dope. They've got like this wicked facial hair that kind of reminds me of Hihachi from Tekken. <laughs> Should I leave that in the video? Yeah, oh yeah, they'll, they'll love it. Okay, so vampires drink blood, right? Duh, I mean, that's their whole thing, right? So let's make Skyrim's blood a little more uh, appetizing. No, that's uh, that's probably not the right word, but uh, it'll do. Vanilla Skyrim blood is so shiny, for real. Why Why is that? Well, enhanced blood textures fixes that. Well, like it says it right here, it's a blood overhaul mod. Hmm. Thanks, Defender. This mod adds higher resolutions and detailed textures to your blood splats and splurge. Plus, it changes the bug blood to green and the machine blood to oil. Now that's realism. You're able to choose which shade of red you'd like your blood to be, as well as the volume of which will exit your enemies. Wow, that feels really weird to say out loud. Bleeding out NPCs will now cause blood drips, giving you the opportunity to follow the trail and finish off the kill. Pools of blood will now react differently depending on the surface type that they fall upon. For example, look at the differences between stone floor snow and dirt i mean besides that it's uh it's better looking blood kind of a requirement for any self-respecting vampire so there's this thing that happens with vampires in dawn guard and for some reason bethesda decided to turn all the vampires including yourself into some hideous goblin looking thing Bruh. yeah that's pretty bad but it doesn't matter anymore because cosmetic vampire overhaul erases all of bethesda's past mistakes Oh yeah, wait. <laughs> okay, maybe it just erases the gaunt, pug-faced vampires from Skyrim. With this mod, you can instantly restore your beautiful, handcrafted vampire creation back to what they looked like before the Dawn Guard DLC. This mod also changes all the NPCs to less, uglier versions of themselves. Which is something that I also think my life could use a little bit of. You're like really pretty. Plus, you're able to change your red vampire eyes to blue. I mean, everyone knows that fashion is the most important aspect of Skyrim, so cosmetic vampire overhaul is an absolute must for anyone looking to create a better vampire experience. Oh, and speaking of fashion, Dongard's vampire armor is, uh, well, awful. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world, but come on, I mean, we paid for this DLC. Couldn't we have gotten a little bit more variation than just vampire armor red, gray, and black? Seriously. Whatever, Hod Tower, I gotta fix everything myself. Guelda and many other armor mods by Deserter X are the type of mods that force you to sweat every time your wife gets near your computer and fear that she'll look over and see what you're doing. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, this is for, uh, uh, for, um, research purposes. Babe, I don't even like this character. She's a vampire and it's disgusting. Ew. 
The Guelda outfit ranks pretty high in the party meter, but I feel that it fits the vampire aesthetic pretty well. I mean, look, it's all black. It's got that choker thing. And I mean, you have to wear a cape if you're a vampire. And we've also got the Lustmord vampire armor, which I feel is much more tame compared to the Guelda armor set. Lustmord still gives you that vampire vibe, but it also fits a little better in with the lore of Skyrim. What I like most about this armor is that you have a lot of options. You can choose to wear the veil instead of the hood, or not wear the weird pants cloak thing. They call it a tacit, tasse, whatever it's called. The point is you can mix and match with this set and it all looks pretty good. And now we're back to Pony Town. The Crimson Blood Armor is truly something a vampire lord would wear. Got fishnets, uh, a cape, it's got that neck collar. Plus, this mod comes with a great looking rapier. Honestly, I downloaded this mod just for the rapier. Oh wait, looks like you can uh, you can download a standalone for the rapier. Well, there you go. Now you don't have to hide your Skyrim characters in shame from your significant other. So who else is tired of being a disgusting gray green vampire lord? Most of you, no one, just me. With humanoid vampire lords, all of your, my, problems will be solved. This mod actually works pretty flawlessly. First, you set what you want your vampire lord armor to look like, which is nice that you get a choice. Kind of feels like you're tearing off your disguise to reveal your true identity. You know, like a e-girl vampire uh, superhero. So once you've set your armor, you can go ahead and transform into the vampire lord, and bam, no more hideous goblin. Which makes sense. I mean, in what lore does the vampire go from looking to like, you know, a vampire into something completely different and wrinkly and gray? I mean, isn't the fact that you're like a vampire with blood magic and necromancy spells cool enough? And speaking of blood magic, let's fix all the vampire's skills and powers, and I do mean all of them. I've got just the perfect mod for the situation. <laughs> okay, shit. So the video's getting a little too cringe for my liking. I've already mentioned chokers, e-girls, and vampires. Time to reel it back in. Sacrosanct is seriously the ultimate vampire mod. If you want to change just one thing about Skyrim vampires, I would download this mod. Oh, and the very last mod, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. Sacrosanct overhauls almost every aspect of being a vampire. With this mod, there's a number of new systems in place that make playing as a vampire more involved and actually fun instead of just some weak debuffs and buffs when you're not in sunlight. Lame. With Sacrosanct, you have a number of passive abilities that give you bonuses when you're well fed, or if you go without Without feeding, then the bonuses turn into detrimental abilities instead, which ultimately will stop your health regeneration and force people to attack you on sight. Lol. Each race also has their own passive ability, the coolest one being the Red Guard. They can send out locusts from their hands. Some of the coolest powers Sacrosanct brings to the table are Blood Cauldron, where you expend some of your vampiric blood to replenish your health, magicka, and stamina at the cost of becoming thirstier. Nightwalk, which allows you to turn into mist and teleport to another location up to 100 feet away. And of course, Vampire's Command, which adds a new dialogue option that forces that person to do whatever you say. <laughs> and look, it literally says die and they actually just die. <laughs> After being a vampire for a number of days, you'll start ranking up in the vampire world, granting you access to even more vampire abilities. Some of these abilities include Blood Bond. Feeding on a sleeping victim makes them your lover. That's how real life works. Alright. Now to the Wolf allows you to feed on people who haven't detected you yet. Now if you feed on the most powerful individuals in Skyrim, you get special Blue Blood abilities, which are pretty useful. The best one I would say is Mythersia, Mythersia, sorry, causes days to pass 20% faster and nights to go by 30% slower. And then there's also the Daywalker passive, which grants you immunity to non-lethal levels of sunlight. And I haven't even talked about the brand new form of magic this mod adds, Chemomancy, which is blood magic. And it comes with some pretty sick spells. You gain access to these spells by completely draining victims when you feed, which also instantly kills them. Ooh, sorry. First, we have Blood Seed, which causes bone shards to grow into your target. Eee, that's pretty gnarly. Then we have Blood Scourge, which is a kind of disease that causes damage over time and then it spreads to all nearby targets. Another crazy one is uh, Blood Onk. Ank. Onkle. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce anything, apparently. This spell hexes a corpse, causing it to levitate and then explode. Yikes. Then, finally, we have the new Vampire Lord abilities. There's some pretty basic passives that the Vampire Lord gets, but I mean, come on, we're only interested in the interesting stuff. Somebody quote that, That's, uh, that needs to be on a t-shirt. The new powers that the Vamp Lord gets are Rays, which shoots out a wave of blood that cuts through targets in a line that causes damage to the enemy and then heals the player character. Then you also get Bats, which allows you to dash super fast in any direction. The Vampire Lord skill tree is increased from 11 perks to 31. Holy moly. 
Plus, there's a lot of perks that affect your normal mortal form as well, which is a bonus. You get perks for this skill tree by killing enemies while in the Vampire Lord form. Some of the coolest perks are Night Cloak. While in combat, your character is surrounded by a cloud of bats that feed on the enemies around you. Ooh, spooky. The Reaping. It allows you to slow time while you gain movement speed and attack speed. And then, of course, there's Maelstrom, which is a simple spell, really. I mean, all it does is create an imploding vortex that pulls everything into it within 50 feet. Big deal. This mod does a lot of stuff for vampires, and if you're interested in a playthrough as one of these bloodsuckers, then I'm making it mandatory that you download this mod immediately. Alright, now remember how nubby and pale and lame the vampire lord's wings are? Well, check this out. Now, that's what wings are supposed to look like. Sorry, buddy. Animated dragon wings admittedly was a little tricky to get installed, but totally worth it. I mean, look at those animations. Mwah, mwah, chef's kiss. It's marvelous. Get stuck trying to get this mod to work. Just join the Discord server or leave a comment below and I'll help you get it sorted out. This mod comes with a number of different variants of the dragon wings, including one that will melt your eyes out of your eye holes. Please use with caution. These animated wings are really cool. With some additional mods, you're able to turn them into equipable rings, which works out really well for our previous mod, Humanoid Vampires. As you can see, all we need to do is equip the armor that we want our Vampire Lord to wear, including these totally Lord-friendly Dragon Wings, and then we press the V key to bind to our Vampire Lord, and there you have it. A totally epic, winged vampire batty. Batty, get it? <laughs> it's like a vampire bat, because, you know, vampires. Vampire. Yeah, you get it. You know, wings are cool and all, but what's the point if you can't actually use them? I mean, all the vampire lord can do is hover like a foot off the ground anyway, except that's where you're wrong, hypothetical naysayer. Vampire lord real flying allows you to really fly, and let me tell you, this feels amazing. Flying over the Skyrim landscapes is honestly a little bit breathtaking. It's a blast to get really close to the ground or fly around bandits while they're trying to shoot you with arrows. I am your Skyrim vampire lord, and you must respect me. So this mod isn't perfect. Perfect. There's no collision, so you'll literally just fly through walls or walk into a mountain. But hey, something so powerful must come with a price, right? To enable flying, you simply equip the power and use it when you're ready. Although, with the Vampire Lord, you have to enable it before you transform as it's not available under the Vampire Powers. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Shoot, why not even try some of these mods out for yourself while you're at it? If you get stuck installing one of these mods, then join the Discord server. We'll chat in real time. Plus, we now have Todd, and let me tell you, he is a wild one. Thank you for watching. You all are beautiful. Uh, keep your keep your chin up, son, and uh, yep, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. Wanderer, here to lick my father's boots. Good job.